Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, welcome. My name is Chris. Today's video is about hits and misses, fragrances that I've added to my collection, most of which thankfully are hits, some of which are misses, and I will tell you why. Some of these are PR, and I will tell you which ones are PR, and I promise you I will make it worth your while. And before I get started, if you have any new fragrances, any new hits or misses, let us all know in the comments below. And with that, I'm gonna dive right in. I have to be done in 30 minutes. That is going to be quite the task for me. So let's go, let's hit it, Chris. Um, this one I've shown in the past three videos I've filmed. This is my third video of the day. And I've shown this in every video. Kate Spade, New York Sparkle. Oh my gosh, one of the best blind buys. Again, I don't recommend blind buying. But the reasons why I blind I blind bought this was I really enjoyed the original Kate Spade. I've shown it before. It has the, it's a strawberry based fragrance. Um, this was very, very affordable. I got a hundred ml for like $30, $35. And the nose behind this uh, is Louise Turner. She's come up with some amazing masterpieces. You know, she did Blanche Bet, she did Possibility, she did Angel Eau de Toilette. She has done all of the good girls. She did many of the Chloe fragrances. So I felt pretty confident and it has a black currant note and I was really interested in getting that. Plus it has a delicious note of a creme brulee accord. Hello, you speaking in my language. So I bought this, it was a big, big hit. It just is so, I actually like this better than the original and I thought the original was really nice. And I smelled the original on a colleague. That's how I learned about the fragrance. But this one I like even more. So instead of being strawberry dominant, this is black currant dominant. And it also has a dominant peony note. So this is like peony covered in a black currant pie or a black currant cobbler. So it is a floral gourmand for sure. So you really do have to kind of like sweet fragrances and you do have to like a little bit of floral. And when I say a little bit, I do mean a prominent peony. That are e it's equal parts kind of black currant cobbler, black currant pie, and it's equal parts peony. Delicious, it wears on the softer side, but when I spray it on clothes, it lasts forever and it's quite addictive. The next one um, is one that I smelled when I was traveling to Houston, I was coming back and I stopped in the duty-free store because I was bored and I had time. And I picked up, this is Prada La Femme Intense. I'd never smelled it before. I sprayed myself before getting on the airplane and I didn't spray myself a lot, so don't worry, I didn't overpower. I think it was like two spritzes. And I couldn't believe how good it smelled. And as soon as I landed, I went online and purchased it because I couldn't stop picking up my shirt. I literally was like picking up my shirt and smelling myself. I didn't care how it looked. It was that good. I found this fragrance kind of that addictive, you know, the one you just can't stop smelling. So I knew I had to have it. So this is very, very similar to the original Prada La Femme, which has been on my wish list for years. I've always really enjoyed that perfume and I just keep forgetting to buy it. Um, but this one is so good. I don't really feel like I need to buy La Femme having this in my collection, but they are different. This one is kind of like the, the older sister to Prada La Femme. It's a little bit deeper. It's a little bit it has a little bit more of a vintagey flair, a little bit darker, more patchouli, and not quite as soapy clean. So, you know, I was really kind of surprised I enjoyed this one because it has a really prominent tuberose in the Lang, and it's very prominent, but there's something about this that, again, I find very, very appealing. It has, um, you know, it's a little bit heavier, it's not as soapy. It has more of a patchouli in the base and something a little bit spicy about it. I don't know, there's some sort of spiciness to it that the original Prada La Femme doesn't have. So two big hits for, for me. Okay, two new fragrances by Toomey that were sent to me <laughs> in PR. I'm gonna start with Signature, this one right here. It's a very, um, very pleasant, musky, shampooy, clean floral that has, um, that has the accord of apple blossom. So it has apple blossom, there's jasmine, a little bit of amber, um, a pomegranate note or accord. I don't get a ton of pomegranate in this one. I get more of like a nice, light, classic, fresh, clean, shampooy, 
floral fragrance with a little bit of a clean light amber in the base. This one reminds me of a body spray and a body lotion that I used to have from Victoria's Secret long ago, years ago, that has been discontinued. So if you've always wanted to get your hands on a perfume version, and I'll put the I'll put a picture up here. This is it right here. This to me is like the perfume version of that scent. It's a little bit more perfumey, a little bit more floral, but man, do they smell very similar. And I think this would appeal to lots and lots of people who love that, you know, that lovely musky floral. The jasmine is very, very prominent here. It's the floral that I get the most, particularly if you like a nice, clean, fresh, non-soapy, a little bit shampoo. It's shampoo-y without being soapy. Um, musky floral. The one I like more, um, I think they're both nice, but this one is my favorite. It's Utopia. And I love this because it has more vanilla. And you guys know I'm a vanilla lover. This is so, so pretty. So it is a vanillic floral. The flower in here is jasmine, but it's a very, very light, subtle jasmine. And the vanilla is slightly sweet, but it's non-gourmand. It does remind me, it comes the closest to Burberry Goddess. So exchange lavender for the jasmine and you're going to get this fragrance right here. So, and it also has better lasting power than Goddess. And I like this better than I like uh, Goddess. And I like Goddess. I always found that one to be really pretty, but I literally could not get that to last longer than an hour. So two very nice releases from Toomey. I think these were wins. They were, they came out with four new ones. I haven't tried the other two, but I think these two are hits. They are nice fragrances for the right person with Utopia being my favorite. Okay, the next two were misses and I thought they would both be big hits. The first one is called Cereal Break and thankfully I only purchased the 5ml decant from Scent Split. I love that place by the way. You can purchase all different sizes. That thing has been amazing. For me to be able to try fragrances and not, you know, kill myself with terrible blind buys, I thought this would definitely be a home run. I mean, some of the notes in here, it has cereal, I wanna say cookie, white chocolate, hazelnut, coconut, milk, honey, cardamom. I mean, literally, what is not to love? Uh, the problem is, is this does not smell like this had one of the worst openings ever. This smelled like you had a nutty cereal and you poured your milk in and then you sprayed it with mothballs. Ooh. I mean, I have no idea what is making me smell mothballs or like a diluted mothball. Take, a mo take the mothballs and you know soak them in water for a little bit, dilute them, but absolutely one of the worst openings, very chemical very offensive, very off-putting to my nose at least. That's what I get. Um, so, and it didn't last forever, maybe about 20 minutes that mothball accord <laughs> died down, but I cannot, and no perfume is worth that opening. It was an absolute, I tried to, I wanted to scrub it off so badly, but I kept it on. So a big miss for this one. So if you were thinking like I was that it was going to be a big hit, I'm just going to go ahead and blind buy it. Think again, get a decant first. I don't know if everybody gets that, but that's what I got. The next miss, miss, miss was Smile. This one is by Acro. Another one I thought I would really, really enjoy, you know, lemon and raspberry and musk. And it smells really good. The issue is that it's it just didn't wow me. This smells like you made a raspberry lemonade, a really good raspberry lemonade, and you put a ton of ice cubes in your lemonade and you put it on the counter and forgot about it. So when you came back, all the ice cubes had melted and really diluted the raspberry lemonade. You know when that happens and then you drink your drink and all you drink, all you can taste is water because of all the melted ice cubes. Um, that's what I get from this. It's incredibly dilute, very, very simple, a nice musky dry down. But I think for the price, it, it, it is overpriced. And I do like several in the line, but I thought this one was just a bit of a miss for me. Okay, I have two hits in front of me. The first one is by Ducita La Rhapsody Noir. I first tried this 
I want to say at least a year ago, maybe longer. One of you out there, Stacia, I don't think she watches me anymore because I don't see her comments, but a subscriber that sent me a decant and I remember thinking, wow, this is such a unique, almost gourmand fragrance and quite lovely. I didn't know what to think of it when I first wore it and then on my second and third and fourth wearing, I just felt like it was such a delicious and unique very complex scent that I wanted to have in my collection and I now have it <laughs> over a year later. So why is it a gour uh, so why is it a borderline gourmand? So it has gourmand elements, vanilla, there's coffee, tonka beans, but there are also elements that pull it out of that gourmand zone, almost in the barbershop -y zone, almost fougere. We have vetiver, there's lavender, um, maybe geranium, I'm not sure. Definitely tobacco. So it has a little bit of an herbal element going on. So this kind of smells like you're in a barbershop and I'm not a big fan of barbershop -y scents, but this would be a baby barbershop. Um, it would be like you're in a barbershop and it's a barbershop slash coffee house. And they haven't made the coffee yet, but they are, they are taking the beans and they're grinding them. So you have this nice aroma of coffee in the air or the coffee beans. So this beautiful dry coffee is in the air on the backdrop of a barber shop. And the, the gourmand elements outweigh the, you know, the aromatic herbal elements. It's a little bit weighed in favor of the gourmand elements, but those herbal elements are definitely in the background. So instead of coffee, I get more of the coffee grounds or the beans, a little bit of vanilla, not that much, and a little bit of tonka, a lovely dry vetiver. It has a nice earthiness in the base and a smidge of unsmoked, very dry, tobacco. This is so unique and pretty. It wears lightly, but lasts a long time on clothes. So the next one, the next kit is by Bon Perfumer, and this is Iris Cartagena. This was given to me in PR. Oh my goodness, I've seen this all over Instagram. I'm telling you, this is all over Instagram, and I definitely think, I think there are a lot of very, very good fragrances in that house. This is by far my favorite and I like a lot of them. The backstory and this is very interesting. The founder, the perfumer, the CEO was having dinner with his wife on a rooftop at night in Cartagena and they were drinking coffee and sipping rum and something happened that the two drinks spilled and they mixed together. And so the creator, the fragrance after smelling the two together was like, Eureka, I think I have something. So what I get, again, I don't get straight up coffee. I get cacao in here, so it's very dusty. It's very dry. So it's more cacao, more dusty dry cacao, a lot less booze. I don't get a ton of, you know, boozy notes. I get a very dusty dry iris or orris, very earthy. It's that lovely earthy iris that hasn't quite gone vegetal yet. Very powdery, very warm, a, a slight Slight sweet vanillic sandalwood in the base. Again, I personally don't get a lot of rum or boozy elements and maybe it just adds to a little bit of the depth, but oh my goodness, home run on this one. It is so warm. This is something that would be terrific in the colder weather, transitioning colder weather. I will be wearing this a ton. Good job, terrific job. Okay, the next two. The next two were PR, and I would say these are neither hits nor misses. I think they are nice fragrances. They just aren't really in my wheelhouse per se, even though I think they are nicely done. The first one is Mystic Bliss by Goldfield and Banks, and I typically love everything that this house comes out with. And again, I don't think this is a bad fragrance at all. It just leans a little bit too much into the fougere zone. I can take a little bit of fougere. And if you are a fougere lover, if you are a fig fougere lover, you're going to love this because I get a lot of fig. I get um, mint. I get a little bit of basil. There's a lot of greenness. It's very earthy. It smells like, like a forest floor, like the, a forest floor, like vetiver, but without the dampness. So I don't like a damp forest floor. I can do more of a dry, you know, earthiness, dry earthiness, green earthiness. This is the dry green earthiness without the dampness. So add a little bit of mint, add a lot of 
fig and you come up with this fragrance. So I do think that this is unisex, but it leans masculine to me, which is why it's a, not quite at my wheelhouse. More fragrances in the line appeal to me more. But I think if you like that type of fragrance, and it definitely would appeal to, I think, lots of men who enjoy fig and a well-done fougere scent. So yeah, uh, well-done perfume just leans a little too masculine and fougere for me. The next one was sent to me in PR. It's by Nicholas Paul, and it is called Academia, and it definitely, you know, fits that dark academia vibe, very gothic. I think this is their first and only fragrance. And I do, I will say that this is for what it is, for the vibe that they're going for, they nailed it. This dark academia vibe, it has, it's very leathery, it has dark fruits, cedar, and a lot of patchouli in the base. So it's like you are in a library at night and it's raining and you are surrounded by these old books and these books have leather there. So they're leather bound books and the leather is old. It's older. So it's a little bit deeper. It's a little bit richer and somebody is stewing fruits way in the background. So it's got this dark fruit hint to it. Um, and a lot of patchouli, the patchouli is on the earthy side. It's earthy, but not quite damp, but it's getting there. So if you really love that vibe, that dark academia vibe, I think this is fantastic. It is unisex, but to me it leans a little bit more masculine. So it's not a miss for me, but it's not a hit in that it leans a little bit too masculine. So I think this would appeal to lots of men or people who love to wear kind of dark, vampy, leathery scents. It would be quite lovely. Okay, and I have one more, and the last one is a hit. It is by a newish house called Florite, and this one is called Floriste. And that translates into florist or a flower shop, and this is exactly what it is. The CEO, I think, is originally from New York and then relocated to Southern California and wanted to create a fragrance brand or a fragrance house that was modern but stayed true to French perfumery. So even though the brand is located in Southern California, the fragrances are all created in France, and I want to say by French perfumers. So this is a very classy, this is a very elegant French floral fragrance. It has tons of flowers, so I can see why it's called Fleuriste or Flower Shop. Lots of florals, I wanna say. Every floral is in here, every flower is in here except rose, and I pick up some rose. So what I pick up mostly, the flowers I pick up mostly are hyacinth, and that smells a little bit lilac-y to me. I pick up a little bit of freesia, and I pick up mimosa, so yeah. Mimosa the most, then hyacinth, then a little bit of rose. Again, I don't think rose is listed, but I get rose. Freesia, and it's all kind of, you know, floating in this very light, gauzy musk. So very traditional, slightly sweet musk with lots of light, airy, lovely flowers in the background. I think this has a note or a tomato leaf accord. I really don't get that. It might be buried in the notes, but it's really, really lovely. And it has the slightest bit of an ambery sweetness, not a vanilla sweetness, not at all, but an ambery sweetness. So the musk has a little bit of sweetness and it's coming from that really light, airy amber. So it's very much of a hit. And I think a lot of people would really love this type of a perfume. And I wanted to mention that I do love that this house offers a discovery set and there are several in the discovery set that I love. My next favorites were, I think it's called Fleur de Tabac, or Tobacco Flower and Gâteau de Angel, um, Angel Cake. These are delicious, and I think they're coming out with an incense-based fragrance. I can't wait to get my hands on that. So love that this house offers smaller sizes and a discovery set, and I think it's well worth it. There are some very lovely, well-made fragrances in here, and that's it. That's it for my hits and misses, and because I don't wanna hoard perfumes that I probably won't wear, not because they're terrible, but just because I think others would really love them much more. Again, I appreciate, thank you so much for the PR, it was lovely, and I do think it was a great fragrance, but it leans a little bit too leathery and masculine for me, so Academia, I do think if you really love those dark, you know, some dark fruits, dark leather, dominant fragrances that are unisex leaning masculine. So to all my, you know, ladies that love that type of fragrance and to all my gentlemen that watch me or subscribe to me, 
uh, let me know. I'm going to be giving this away. And also Mystic Bliss. I do find that this is a well-made perfume, but again, it's like a fig fougere, and that's really not up my alley. And if you like fig fougeres, you will love this perfume. So the only thing you have to do, you have to be in the United States. I tried to do a giveaway overseas on my last giveaway. I ran into a few complications. So let's keep this one in the United States. You have to be in the United States. You have to be a subscriber and like the video and let me know which one you're interested down below. And I will comment to you or respond to your comment and post it up on the community board for the winners. Let's say we'll give it a week. So that was it, my hits and misses. Thanks again for sticking around. Thanks for watching. If you want to win one of these, give me a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed. Hit the, notifi hit the notification button so that you are aware when I upload a video. Let us all know what your hits and misses for the month are or for the last few months are and I hope to see you on the next one.